Hello and welcome to exercise 9 about using tracking data to do stabilization in Final Cut and Motion. So if we take a look at the original footage we've got here. Let's turn this off for a second. We've got a little dolly shot uh, going on, but it's exceedingly jerky. So there's just yeah, a lot of movement going on in the camera. So the move isn't smooth in any sort of way. And what we want to do is take out that sort of jerkiness whilst maintaining the, uh, the rest of the sort of smooth motion. So um, I've got two tracks already put in. I've got one track for my background and that's looking nice. And I've also got one track done on the shoe as well. Now, the reason that I want to do two tracks here is, is really just to show you uh, the difference it's going to make by changing the focus uh, of our stabilization from a point in the background to a point on uh, an object in the foreground. Now, these, these tracks themselves were done very, very simply. Uh, everything was left at the default settings. The only difference was uh, everything was turned off for tracking apart from translation. So we're only tracking in the, uh, the position, basically. Cool, so let's take out the background track first. Uh, I'm going to export out my tracking data. And let's start with uh, Final Cut. So we'll come in. And for this one, we want Final Cut Basic Motion here. And the one thing we have to remember to do if we're going to take this out for stabilization is click Invert. And I'll hit Save. And I'll save this out as Background Track FCP. And while I'm here, I'll do the shoe track as well. So export out that tracking data, basic motion, invert, save that out as shoe track, FCP. Cool, and let's bring those back into uh, to Final Cut. Okay, so let's uh, import my XML files we've done before. And we'll come to the correct folder and let's start with the background track here. Leave everything as default. Change my name up a little bit. We do love the very long names here. There we go. And let's, let's just take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so it's looking smoother. We can see it's been stabilized out. But it's not quite what we were expecting. Now let's drag this down onto the, uh, the timeline. Yeah, that's fine. Now, if I double click on this here and come into the motion, there's no easy way of offsetting this here. In After Effects, we can adjust, you know, the anchor point separately to the um, to the position, and that that kind of helps out. But in this case, it doesn't work like that because the anchor point really only affects the uh, rotation. Even if we try and add a, uh, a filter here and change the uh, the center point, you know that's not going to help either because the processing order in Final Cut processes all the filters first and then does the uh, the motion afterwards, so it's always going to crop that out. Uh, so let's get rid of our basic three D here. Uh, another way of sort of trying to handle this a little bit is by doing nesting. So if I come in, have my clip selected on the timeline, nest those items, and nest it in a significantly bigger uh, uh, sequence. So let's make it double, double as big if I can. And let's just open this up by double clicking on it. You can see that now, because it's nested in there, we're able to get the height we're still missing some of the width, but if we come into this one here, actually, and then just drag this up into here, what I can do is rescale it and reposition it a little bit. And that kind of works a little bit, but it's, it's really not uh, optimal at all. So any sort of extreme stabilization or stabilization really where you want to customize it just isn't really viable within Final Cut. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use that little connection 
between Final Cut and Motion again. If you're working with Final Cut Pro 7 or 6, then use the particular version of Motion that was bundled with your Final Cut Studio. But let's pop back into Mocha here and let's export this tracking data once more and we'll take it out now to Motion Basic Transform. Oh, I need to remember to hit invert again. I just forgot to hit invert. So let's do background track motion and we'll take the shoe track out one more time and I'll remember to hit invert this time. And I do want to overwrite that. Thank you very much. Now, one thing before we uh, look at a motion here is one way of checking out the results that we're going to get before we even take it out anywhere. We can just click stabilize up at the top on the toolbar next to the uh, uh, zoom windows. And this is gonna show us the difference between stabilizing out of the shoe, where the girl is stable and remains in focus, and stabilizing out the background, where we take out a lot of the sort of camera movement, but we still keep the girl moving. And this is just, uh, you know, stabilizing um, in this way is, is great when we come and look at rotoscoping, but it's also good to make sure that before we export any data out, that it's doing what we expect it to. Cool, well, let's pop into, uh, into motion now. And we're gonna open up. We'll take the, uh, the background track one first and we'll open up the original. And let's have a look what it's doing. Cool, okay, interesting. Right, so we've established now that we are getting transform data out, which is good. So let's stabilize this clip out. Now, pretty much this is the same sort of workflow as we were doing the uh, with the match move, except instead of um, applying filters or behaviors, I should say, to a separate clip, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply it to our base clip here. So let's come to our library, come to the behaviors, and to motion tracking, and let's take the match move one more time here and apply that to our base clip, take our surface into the image well again, and let's just hit play on that. So now check out our background. I'm not gonna move the mouse. It's staying absolutely perfectly still, which is exactly what we want it to do. Cool, but as we can see, there's a whole load of um, black now being brought in. As the edges move out, uh, it's bringing in all this, this sort of black over here. So what we want to do is we want to smooth out the motion. We don't want to just sort of completely stabilize this out. So how are we going to do that? Well, you know, one way with this sort of clip is we can come in, uh, let's come to my base clip here and I'm going to go to the properties. What we can do is we can add position keyframes here uh, that are going to help us out to, um, to sort of build on top of the, uh, the tracking data. Sort of exactly the same way that the adjust track works in Mocha. So it takes our tracking data, we're just gonna add extra keyframes on top of it. So let, let's see what happens when, when we, try and, we try and do that. Let's just add a keyframe here. I'll turn my animate on as well. And let's come, well, let's come to the end of the clip. And let's try and just move, scrub this up and down. Okay, nothing's happening. It's, it's absolutely stuck. So it looks like I actually can't animate my layer at all. But here's a little secret. Here we go to the match move again. And well, in fact, we don't even need to go to the match move. We just need to go to behaviors. What we can do is have a little look down at transform here. It's saying attach to source. Uh, and this means that it's perfectly mimicking the uh, surface here. So any additional keyframes that we've put on are gonna be completely wiped out. Instead of doing attach to source, I say mimic source. And this now, if we go to our properties, this is now gonna let us animate up and add some keyframes. But let's see what happens when we press play. Now we're getting the best of both worlds. We've got the general stabilized movement of the background going on, but we've also brought in some of that natural um, right to left or left to right, depending on which way you're looking at it, uh, movement from the camera. 
So our object in the background, now instead of just staying static, is moving slowly from left, or sorry, from right to left. Now I can come up here, let's turn animate off again. Come up here and just scale up just a little bit. Maybe to 104. And we've almost got rid of those lines there. If I want to completely get rid of it, maybe I'll add another keyframe. There we go. We don't want to add too many because that just um, you know, kind of defeats the point. And also can give us a, a sort of quite unnatural kind of look. Cool, that, that's looking at the, the background track. Let's come in and see what we can do with the, uh, the shoe. So I'm going to just open up my shoe track. Open the original. Do the same as we did before. So come into my base clip. Come to the library, behaviors, motion tracking, match move. Surface goes into the image well. Over into the inspector and take that to mimic source. Fit that in the window. And let's have a look what's going on now. And now that's that's coming in and that's changing the focus up a little bit and keeping the girl in the picture. So let's come in and animate this up a little bit more. Let's add a keyframe here. Come to close towards the end where it's the worst or the, the most out of screen, I should say. And we'll just reposition it up. Can just drag that here as well. Probably want another keyframe back here. Now I turn my animate off. I can scale it up just a little bit as well there. Cool, and that's looking that's looking quite nice. We've got the sort of natural movement going in still without most of the, the jerkiness. Now we still have a little bit of area here and we can see the background sort of shining through still. And we can, you know, carry on and scale our way out of the problem. Um, another little thing we can do if, if basically all the, the line is over on one side uh, is we can try and sort of, yeah, hide that area just a little bit using a, uh, using a mirror effect. Uh, and let's, let's see how we do that because it's not just a, a simple case of coming into our filters and coming over to the distortion and going to mirror. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, if we do that, um, it doesn't quite work out how we want it to because it's sort of mirroring. We've applied it to the base clip and it's now mirroring just the base clip before the, uh, the transform happens. If we paste it into the group itself and move it up there, it's still not working out exactly as, uh, as we expect it to. Uh, and the reason for that is because the group itself is is actually only as big as the the biggest clip in there. And so as that clip is over to the side, you know, motion isn't going to bother rendering out uh, all of this sort of blank area here. So what do we do? Let's pop over into our image units and we'll just come over actually image units down here underneath the generators. And we'll come over and we'll just do a constant color. And we'll place that right underneath at the bottom of the group. And see what happens here. Straight away, it's now repeating out to the edge of the full frame. So this is good. This is a good start. So we can start to kind of line things up a little bit. Well, let's, let's uh, make sure our constant color starts from the first frame. And we'll go to the end frame here. Come to a little mirror and place that in there. And that, that's that's worked out um, okay, I suppose. So, I mean, the only thing that I could do is we could actually keyframe up a little bit 
So let's come in, uh, add a keyframe down here, turn our animation back on here actually. Come over and we'll just bring it to, to the edge, basically where the other keyframes are happening. Cool, and let's actually let's just come back to the base clip, come over to the properties. Just scale that up just a wee bit more. Cool, well that's the basic workflow when we're trying to just uh, stabilize out the position data. Let's let's take a quick look at another clip. Back into Mocha Pro, let's take a look at our rotate clip. And you'll remember this one as the card that was rotating around. So let's export out that tracking data. We'll save this, uh, invert this, save this out. And we'll just call this motion here. Hit save and bring that into motion now. And let's see what happens when we stabilize this one up. So base clip, library, behaviors, motion tracking, match move, drag the surface into the image well, and let's uh, let's get that playing back. So we now have the stabilization sorted out and we can easily add in rotation and scale as well, just with a single click on the button there. And now we've got our clip, which is completely stabilized out, which is a very interesting little look. Now, one of the ways you can see this being used is if you do this exact same thing to someone walking down the street, you know, you get a quite a spooky little look where their head and their body stays in one place, uh, but the background kind of moves around. It's, uh, it's actually a nice little experiment to, uh, to do. And the final thing we're going to look at is just if you don't want a complete full um, stabilize up, well, let's, let's turn the scale and rotation off here for a second and just have a look at the transform. So we've got an absolutely accurate transform uh, stabilize going on here. What if we just wanted to smooth that out with without actually um, any keyframes as we did previously? Well, what we can do is if I come to my uh, properties over here, come to the position, and we're gonna add a parameter behavior. We could just add this, if you're in a, an older version of motion, you can just add this parameter behavior uh, manually, but we can go onto average here. And what this is gonna do is I scrub this up and down. You can see the motion path here smoothing out. So we're basically taking out some of the total stabilization because uh, it's having to do a few more uh, maths processes here. We are gonna get a slightly slower uh, frame rate than we were previously, but I can take that up even to 100 so we can get very, very uh, small and smooth um, little process going on there. So with zero on my average, we're getting the full, the full Monty. And then if I just average out more and more, we can see that just smoothing in there. So that's cool when you want to keep in just a little bit of the uh, the camera motion, of the, the regular camera motion, you can just sort of take out the, the jolts, uh, as it were. Cool, well that is using the stabilization data in Apple Final Cut Pro and Motion. <laughs>